All right, what's on the bench? Uh, well, it looks like it's a six megahertz bandpass filter at 2.75 kilohertz bandwidth. Um, and I didn't, well, I knew it was gonna be six megahertz. I didn't know what the bandwidth was before I built it. So, so why did I build this thing? I'll, I'll, show, you, I'll show you my design. Um, I needed something to test um, a particular instrument. In fact, it's the new oscilloscope that I have. I, I needed a waveform on the scope that had particular qualities to it. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, I do this often. I'll build little test jigs. Like um, I, I, I did a video on this. This is my little... Um, it has two oscillators at different frequencies and they get mixed together. So this was to test uh, spectrum analyzers to make sure you could resolve those two frequencies that are very, very close to one another, whether or not you had a good, a good enough resolution bandwidth. You need at least three, 300 hertz to, to, to resolve this thing. Um, and so uh, I, I built little test fixtures. Um, I was gonna use this and it didn't work out. Um, so I decided, um, uh, to build my own. So, 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 what is this? Let me let me show you the uh, let me show you the schematic. Let me take a different pen out here. All right. So this is a classic uh, crystal bandpass filter. So uh, a lot of times they're you know two, three, four, five, six, a whole any number of crystal oscillators. The more you put in, the the narrower the uh, the narrower the bandwidth is going to be. Okay. And it's basically you're going to send things through these two crystals. Now I have a whole bag of six megahertz crystals, so so I'm going to I'm going to use six megahertz crystals, and that's where it will be centered. And then these things generally look like this. Uh, they have uh, capacitors to ground, and the capacitors to ground are usually somewhere around 20 to picofarads or, you know, 30 picofarads, 33 picofarads, you'll see different numbers used. And I suppose there's some math that you can use to make the right ones, but it doesn't really matter for something that's just a test device. It's, I'm not gonna be using this in a product, it's just a test device on my, on my bench. So I looked, in my, um, I looked in my pile and I had some 39s. So I put in some 39 picofarad uh, capacitors here. And then I decided to AC couple it to the outside world. And just for fun, I put in 100 picofarad capacitors, which I happen to have in my pile. So I just built this and I said, okay, that should be good enough. Um, so I constructed it on just some standard, you know, uh, some type of proto board. And um, is that, I'm gonna have to zoom way down on here. Let me show you that. All right, so I did surface mount on the back here. <laughs> and so uh, you can see I've got the uh, 39, 39, 39, and then here's the 100 and the 100. And so I found that with 0805 surface mount parts, you can just span these 100, micro, uh, 100 mil gaps on these proto boards and you can just do surface mount prototyping that way. So anyway, that's how I built it. Okay, and so um, we, we can hook it up. Uh, I put on uh, two SMA connectors so I can test it with a spectrum analyzer, and I put in some little little loops here, uh, little wire loops here, so I can clip on oscilloscope probes if I want to test it with an oscilloscope probe. Um, and so we will just attach the uh, tracking generator to this side, and I'll get rid of this thing here. And we'll connect the spectrum analyzer input to this side. So we'll be doing, oh man. Sure we, there we go. Um, all right, so there, there we have a through measurement we'll be making on our uh, spectrum analyzer. And we'll do a uh, frequency center of uh, six megahertz. We'll do a span of uh, 20 kilohertz, because it's a very narrow filter. Um, and then we'll turn the tracking generator on. And there you go. So it's, you know, it's this nice shape, right? Um, that's what I was looking for. I wanted something narrow and I wanted something with distinct features on it that I needed to be able to resolve, right? To be able to resolve those two little peaks at the top, 
I wanted to see if um, the uh, Keysight uh, uh, oscilloscope could, could actually sweep this with a Bode plot. Um, usually body plots are done kind of in the audio range, but I don't see any reason, especially with a one gigahertz oscilloscope, that you couldn't do a body plot on something at six megahertz. I mean, that's almost DC for this uh, fancy oscilloscope. So anyway, that's the video for the day. It's just building little test fixtures. Don't be afraid to have a whole bunch of little test fixtures laying around. Uh, other test fixtures I've built in the past have been like this... Uh, little board here with a bunch of uh, high precision resistors on it. Um, I use that one all the time. Uh, I built this little board which tests Zener diodes. I built this little test board that's just different um, uh, different diodes to test uh, DVMs with. Um, yeah, uh, I built this little test board to test op amps. So yeah, don't be afraid to build little projects. I have a lot of fun building little projects just to, just to do things. And I know that once I've built this, I'll use it in the, in the future. I, you know, I know it's here. And if I need to check something out quickly or I need to validate something, I can just pop this in there and I, I know what to expect. I know the performance of this thing. And, you know, these components aren't going to drift anywhere, right? These are nice crystals and, and uh, nice capacitors and stuff. The uh, 39 picofarads are actually COG. Um, so, uh, yeah, should be, should be a nice little thing to have in the, in the drawer. And like I said, yeah, don't be afraid to build a whole bunch of these things. And... Uh, have them uh, have them at your disposal.